I'm glad I caught you. Rosa was, was telling me today's your day off. Right. I hope you don't have any urgent plans. Do you see this? This is the greatest surfboard you will ever see. It's light, it's got lots of stability, and it's going to make you the perfect surfer. Me? Well, I don't see anybody else around here. Now, now wait. I'm like the perfect teacher, and I think this is like the uh, only opportunity to make you the certified Californian. <laughs> Dad, I can't. No, 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 you can't afford not to. I'm telling you, Haley, you gotta believe me. Surfing is like the greatest natural height in the world. And right now, the conditions are perfect. It's like a three-foot swell. It's really gentle. And you're gonna be like a pro in no time. It believe me. It sounds great. It really does, but I already have plans for today. I'm sorry. Oh, well, uh, when do you think you'll be finished with that? I don't know. Well, all right, well, where are you going? Maybe I can give you a ride or something. No, right? that's okay. No, 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 it's no trouble. I'll just put this way. No, I'm fine. I mean, it's really close. I better be going. Wait, Haley! Haley! Yeah? Is there something you don't want me to know? No, of course not. Why won't you tell me where you're going? Ted, she doesn't have to log her itinerary with you, whatever she wants to do in her day off. It's her business. No, I know. Why don't you run along, Haley? Huh? We'll see you when you get back. Yes, sir. Bye, Ted. I think you and I better have a little talk. What about? About that pretty girl who just left. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I frighten you? Yes. I, I, I didn't mean to. Please, no, enjoy the sun. I just came out to talk. Well, David, if you've come here to ask me to explain what I said to the police, then I must tell you... But they no, 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 it's, it's okay. I, under, I understand why you had to talk to them. Well, they wanted to know if I'd seen anyone outside of the bungalow, and I had to tell them the truth. Of course you did, Courtney. I want to get at the truth as much as you do. Helen was my wife. I loved her. I mean, I, I don't care what kind of questions they ask, as long as we get at the truth of who really killed her. Well, I'm glad you feel that way. Look, I, I, know, I know some of my actions have been puzzling to you. Yes, and when I saw that cigarette butt next to my sister's body, well, I didn't know what to think. That's why you, more, more than anyone, maybe, want you to understand exactly what really happened. what you tried to do, your life is going to be anything but peaceful. On your way up north again, I see. I'm not. Juanita is. Juanita Gonzalez is getting on that plane. Hello? Well, they hung up. What are you doing in my room? I'm here on business. What business? Police business. Oh, Castillo, what does it have to do with? With the lady who donated your heart? I'm investigating her murder. I thought the murder took place in Santa Barbara. It did. But a call was made from Madeline Lorenz to this location. Eden spoke to her not long before she died. I didn't realize that. So you're, you're really here because you want to talk to Eden? That was the plan. Well, where is she? She had to go back to Santa Barbara. What for? I don't know, but I'm sure she'll be back soon. 
It's funny you didn't fly back with her. Couldn't get a seat on the same plane. You know, Kirk, she was all broken up when it seemed like your body was going to reject your new heart. It's amazing to look at you now. You'd never know how critical the situation was. Well, I feel better than I have in a long, long time, Chris. You're very lucky. All I want to do is get back to my wife. I can understand that. Sure you can. After all, you're a family man now yourself, aren't you, Chris? How is everybody? How's Santana and Brandon doing? They're doing fine, Kirk. Oh, I'm really glad to hear it. Oh, I was just leaving. I know he needs his rest. Well, keep up the good work. Yeah, I will. I want to get out of here. I'm back on my feet. Believe me, I want to see that happen just as much as you do, pal. You know, Castillo, I kind of find it interesting you stopping by and looking in on me. Well, I don't get to see a real live triumph of medical science every day. I hope your scientific curiosity is satisfied. Not quite. You take care now. Courtney, look at me. You know I could never have hurt Madeline. The whole reason I came out here and, 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 and what I was doing when you saw me was a last-ditch effort to, to try to change her mind. Do you understand? I was trying to save our marriage. I would have done anything. You can believe that, can't you? I don't know what to believe, David. Oh, I, look, I, I know. I, I left her alone far too often. I take full responsibility for that, but she was a, she was a very independent woman i thought okay i was wrong but i thought the more freedom i gave her the happier she'd be did you ever think that she may have been having an affair if she was i consider it as much my fault as hers but i didn't care about the past all i cared about was was that i wanted it never to happen again i, I wanted things to be the way they were what we once had so you came here to plead with her yeah i didn't come here to punish her or or create a scene? You believe that, don't you? Hey. What is going on? I'm talking to my sister-in-law. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't think that's such a good idea. Why? Because you think that uh, something I might say might remove the suspicion from me and put it where it rightly belongs? Uh, no, I just don't think that Courtney wants to talk to you. That is all. Well, if she doesn't, I'd say it's probably because you've been putting ideas in her head. You know, it must make you feel really proud to know that you've put doubt in her mind about David, her own no family. David, no one's making me do anything. I have a mind of my own. Courtney, I understand why you're so uncompromising. You loved your sister. You want to see justice done. I respect that. Well, then why don't you just save your sob stories for the police, okay? I have nothing to fear from the police. Well, I hope not. Cruz Castillo is assigned to this case. If you do have anything to fear, he's going to dig it up and he's going to throw it right back in your face. Dad, I'm, uh, I'm meeting somebody here. Okay. Stay until he gets here. They're going to be here any minute, Dad. I'm not leaving until we settle this one. How long do you intend to go on playing this Diamond Jim Brady act? What? They've called in all your markers, son, at the casino. You've overshot your limit and then some. Are you denying that? I don't have to deny it or confirm it. Oh. It's none of your damn business, Dad. Oh, really? Well, it tends to become my business when you're getting dead up your eyeballs and maybe you can't take care of it yourself. Oh, yeah? Who says? I know your financial situation, son. You told me the truth, remember? 
And I know about that paper. I know what your assets are. I can are. handle it, Dad. That's why I'm here. Oh, I see. What are you planning on going to a loan shark? You'd be in bigger trouble than you are right now. Dad, I know what I'm doing and who I'm dealing with. Everything's going to be just fine. Fine. And you won't mind if I sit here and sit in on the meeting, right? I'm not going to say anything. Dad, I do I mind. I mind very much. I won't say a word. Now, what could possibly be wrong with that, huh? Son. Son, do you... You really hate me this much. Let's just say the person I'm expecting wouldn't appreciate your being here. Does that make it clear? C.C. Kaplan. You're not just desperate, Lauren. You've gone crazy. Uh, sit down. I don't think so. What's the matter? Hmm? Why don't I just save you the trouble, Dad? Want me to back off, right? Or Haley's concerned? I don't think I would have put it quite that way. Well, that's the essence of the message, isn't it? Look, Ted, I can understand you being attracted to the girl. She's quite lovely. Yes, Dad, she is. But on the inside, too, which you wouldn't know anything about. I don't doubt it. She projects a very nice quality. Uh, Dad, excuse me, but I'm not talking about vague things like qualities. I'm talking about some heart and soul and goodness. Haley is a very special person. All the more so because of the hard life she's been through, I'm sure. Makes people want to step in and come to the rescue. Oh, uh, Dad, please, if you think I like it because I got the chance to be some hot shot white knight. Oh, come on, son. You're a kind and compassionate man who's easily drawn to people who are less fortunate, that's all. Dad, that has nothing to do with it. Come on, sit down. Come on. <laughs> Look, I know you don't want to hear this, but you do come from two different worlds. Haley's aware of that, even if you're not. That's why she's trying to maintain the proper distance. Maintain the proper distance. Now, Dad, what is that? Six and a half meters? Who makes up these stupid rules just because one person happens to live here and the other person happens to work here? Ted, she's being a realist. She knows who she is, and she doesn't want to jeopardize the best job she's ever had. Don't, don't complicate her life. Your memory is as sharp as ever, Dad, isn't it? An inspiration to us all. What is that supposed to mean? That this is the same speech he gave to Channing about Santana. Word for word. Probably stored away and just waiting for the right time. I was hoping you'd be a little wiser than Channing was. I guarantee you I will be, Dad. You know, if anything were ever to happen with Haley and me, I would never let you destroy it at the last minute the way you did with Channing. Dad, I hope that you don't pursue that girl just to make that point. Dad, I do things because I feel them. You know, it's like with this little father-son talk we had when you said you would never tell me what to feel and what not to feel. Son, I would hate to think that Haley would have to go looking for another position. Whoa. Ted. Ted, where are you going? I'm taking the surfboard away. Suddenly, I'm not in the mood. Look, I'm trying to save you some heartbreak down the line. Don't you see these kind of things never Dad, work? Dad, I can't listen to you anymore. I am totally immune. You know, you're not better luck getting through that thing. You know, it seems to me like our father and son talk never even happened. Don't tell me. Surf's up. Just follow me. Take your time. It's quite a collection. These are all markers? Your son probably didn't realize they were all adding up. That's the total amount of the debt. Good God, that's a small fortune. Yes, and I can't let it go on, Augusta. I'm sure you understand. As principal shareholder, I decided I have to collect for the casino before it gets any worse, and I've notified Warren. Is he aware that he owes you all this money? Well, I certainly didn't mince words with him. Yes, he's meeting me this morning. He hasn't taken the first bus out of town. I don't think he has a ticket for the first bus out of town. I never realized it got to this proportion. Well, obsessive gambling is a sickness, like any other. By the time you realize you had it, uh, it's almost too late. Going to have to have professional help. I agree with that. But Augusta, there are practical considerations we have to deal with right now. Well, I can take care of part of it now, but the rest of it I'm going to have to go and transfer some money. I... That is not the answer. Well, what do you mean? Warren 
has to take care of this. This is his own responsibility. Well, I know, but I mean, I, I'm the only one who's going to be able to help him. I'm certainly in a better position than Lionel. Do you think he's going to want you to bail him out? He's a grown man. He's not going to come to you for help. I don't know who he's going to turn to. Well, I'm not going to take the money anyway. You want to offer it to Warren, you do that. But I think he'd probably hate you if you do. Warren is not in control. Warren will be a lot better off if he deals with this himself. And you are free to do whatever you want. You can give him the money if you feel like. You will give him some time. I mean, he, he's never been in this sort of trouble before. I realize that, Augusta. Goodbye, dear. Oh, great. Starved. Gina. Oh. You call that lunch? Well, I hope I'm not expected to feed you. So, are you here to finish me off? My, my, Kurt. Get out, Gina. Calm down. After all, your delicate little lady's heart can't take it. One day, Gina. One day you're going to get up and walk out of here. And kill you. Now you're calming down. Now you're not. When they release you, you're going to help me get Brandon back. And everything else that's rightfully mine. You're the only person who can do it, Kirk. No. Now don't get testy, Kirk. After all, you've just been through one of the most difficult operations in medical history, and you've even managed to survive it. Well, it's a shame nobody's here to cheer you up. Where is your loving wife? Eden had to go back to Santa Barbara on business. Really? What kind of business, sir? Santa Barbara police business? The detective division, maybe? You are digging your own grave, Gina. Well, I'm not worried. Because I have that little piece of tape, remember? Where you admit that you set me up to kill your wife. And if you don't come through for me, Kirk, I'm going to buy myself a brand new set of batteries and push play. Listen, I have a brand new heart in here, Gina. It's a Capwell heart. No less. And it's going to make me better and stronger and smarter than ever. So don't think that you can just push me around. Just because you have a piece of tape. Let me go. I am in this bed because of you, Gina. And I will never forget how you brought on my heart attack. And I intend to return the favor. So help me. Ted? Hello. What are you? Well, I hope you're not mad. I'm surprised. Oh, well, now this isn't the first time I've been here. I've followed you here before. You did? Yeah, yeah, last week. I, I kind of went out by the street, kind of waiting out for you, trying to think what I'd say when I caught up to you. But then after a while, I felt like a jerk, so I left. Probably what you're going to tell me to do right now. I don't like being followed. That's for sure. Uh, well, now, hey, well, I'm not too wild about the idea of you going to a place like this all by yourself. Well, if you didn't follow me, then you wouldn't know where I was going. Then you wouldn't have to be worried. But, uh, Haley, see, you don't say anything about yourself, anything about your life, so... All right, look, I, I don't have anything to say. I'm I just worried about you. I'm going to see you, so... I'm sorry. Forget it. So this, uh, boyfriend's place? What? Got some guy stuff here. It's not my boyfriend's place. Well, it's got the uh, address that's on your application, so it's certainly not yours. <laughs> Haley... I thought we were friends now. Is, is what I'm asking, is this such confidential stuff that you can't say a thing? Okay, you want to know who lives here? Yes. A person I met the very first week I got into town. A woman. We met in the line at the bank, and she told me where the post office was and where to go shopping, and we became instant friends. That's nice. Well, where is she? At the market, and she'll be back any second. Oh, so I, I guess I should make myself scarce then. All right, I'm sorry. I mean, I, I know I had no right coming here. It's... Haley, the truth is... What? I've just been kind of wondering if you're seeing somebody. Boyfriend. I mean, you come here like twice in a row. I... I... Oh, Ted, shut up. I'm sorry. This is just going to make things worse. Have a nice day off. Who the hell are you? Well, who the hell are you? Excuse me, did you just ask me what am I doing here? Yeah. Uh, I live here. 
What's your excuse? Oh, I'm just Haley's friend. Angel, this is Ted Capwell. Ted, this is Angel Ramirez. Oh, Capwell, right. Yeah, Haley thinks a lot about your family. It's very nice to meet you. Likewise. So, Haley, you must really rate getting a special visit from the boss, huh? I'm not Haley's boss. That's my dad who hired her. We're just friends. Well, you two have probably a lot to do today. It's your day off. I'll see you both later. Look, hold on. Haley, the place looks fine, and your friend here is making me feel a little bit guilty about your day off, so why don't you two go out and catch a movie or something? See, Haley comes by on her days off and cleans up around here. I mean, I don't got no mansion or nothing, but she, you know, does laundry, dishes, stuff like that. Right. I owe you some money, Ted. This is how I'm paying him back. Yeah, and trouble is, I'm almost already all paid back, and she's kind of got me spoiled. You're very lucky. She's a good worker. So this is the lady you met in line at the bank. Look, I'm sorry. I know that was a stupid thing to do. I just didn't want you to get the wrong idea. See you later. Nice meeting you. <laughs> Angel. Bye. What's this about a lady at the bank? It's a really stupid idea I had before you came back. Oh, Angel, you're going to think I'm... Well, there's something wrong with me. Oh, come on, hey, what could possibly be wrong with you? That was Ted. What was he doing here? Oh, God, did he see you? I don't think so. I had my head down. I almost passed out when I realized who it was. Okay. What the hell was he doing here? Well, look, Gina, it's a long story, but he didn't see you, so everything's okay. I want to hear this long story. I've got plenty of time. Now, why don't you just tell me about it? He followed me here. He followed you? You let him follow you all the way over here. Look, I'm sorry. I didn't think in a million years. Do you know what would happen if the Capwells found out you and I knew each other? Don't you realize you've come close to ruining everything? Hey, Gina, why don't you lay off? She didn't do anything. She was careless. She didn't keep her eyes open. She didn't look behind her. This is supposed to be top secret for crying out loud. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry, I didn't know he was going to follow me, especially here. And how did you explain this one? Did you tell Teddy he was giving you private Salma lessons? Uh, uh, uh. Don't you worry about it, okay, Gina? We explained the situation very good, all right? I'll bet. Yes, we told him that uh, she comes by and cleans up on her day off, all right? I'm supposed to owe him money. This is how I'm paying it back. You think Ted bought that? Probably not. What am I going to do? I'll tell you what you're going to do. You're going to go and you're going to find him. Then you're going to make nice. You're going to make real nice. And you tell him. Tell him that, that the Capwells, that, that you thought they would fire you if they found out you were trying to hold down two jobs. I don't care what you tell him. You just get his trust back. It's not going to be that easy. Look, honey, if anybody can do it, you can. Look at you. You tell one line. You've got guilt written all over your face. He's going to see how bad you feel and the look on your face. And he's going to feel sorry for you in two seconds. Now go. No, no more. Any more credit is out of the question. Our only option right now is immediate settlement. And now that you've verified those signatures are yours, you're liable for the entire amount. Oh, immediate's going to be a problem, Cece. I, I don't have that kind of cash right now. Well, cash is not what is always in the pocket, Warren. Other assets are available. <laughs> My business isn't worth a plug nickel right now. I started losing money at the paper. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Slow down. I'm not talking about the newspaper. I'm talking about property. What property? Sure. Property your grandmother gave you some time ago. You <laughs> sold it off, haven't you? I wouldn't sell that property, CC. That property was given to me as a gift. It's supposed to be passed down to my children and then to theirs. Fine. Fine. Not only am I prepared to offer you a top dollar price for your property, but I will compensate you for the sentimental value as well. In other words, all you have to do is uh, give me the deed. I tear up the debts. And that's it. Pretty fair, I think. I'm not about to give that property away. You're not giving it, Warren. You owe it. I owe money, not land that's been in my family for years. Uh-huh. But the land is the only thing you have that has access to the money. CC, if you just give me a little more time. Warren, you've had enough time to amass a monumental debt. You should be very glad that I'm stopping the clock right now. I would like that deed by tomorrow evening. I know what you're thinking, CC. You got Warren. Right where you want it. If you don't have me, 
Yeah, quite a natural athlete you were. You are, shall I say. I could tell when I saw you cut through the waves. Am I right? Well, I never trained for the Olympics, but I did swim in school. Mm. I even uh, got to the state final. Really? Oh, it's gorgeous. Pearl, I'm really glad you brought me here. You are? Well, with uh, Cruz and me, it's like uh, mi casa es su casa. Well, that's there. great, yeah. Because that swim really cleared my head. Thank you. Had to be butterfly, right? What? With your specialty in the state finals. Well, yes, as a matter of fact, it, how on earth would you know? Oh, I don't know, just the uh, timing of your strokes, the way your upper body just uh, cruises through the waves, just so. <laughs> uh, your muscular development. <clears throat> I mean, you, you must have been something to see, really. Yeah, well, you must have spent some time in the water yourself. For me? Yeah. Well, I've been known to fall off a boat on occasion. No, I'm serious. Did you swim? Did you swim competitively? Well, sure. The great international doggy paddle championships. Ring Tin Tin, Lassie, Yoda. All the top contenders, say what they All I asked you, Pearl, is if you swam. Would it be a crime for you to give me a straight answer? Well, probably not. Oh, well, I guess you've forgotten how after this long, huh? Uh, okay, yes, I, I did go for a swim or two, uh, here and there, but... I'm no Olympic contender either. Oh, here and there. That's really enlightening. I thank you for confiding in me. It really, it really is impressive. Thank you. I, I don't understand why you make such a big deal out of this. Pearl, I have bared my soul to you. I have put it all on the line. And as David said, I even turned my back on my family, all in favor of someone I know nothing about. Nothing. Hey, wait, wait a minute. Now, you know that I didn't kill your sister, yes, right? Yes, I know that. But don't you think I'm entitled to just a little bit more information? My goodness, I've stuck my neck out for you, and, and I don't even know your real name. Okay. Okay what? Okay what? You deserve a few straight answers, but you best sit down because the complete and unabridged version may take a little time. Well, I'm waiting. Right. Um, well, hey, Cruzy, yeah. I didn't know anybody was here. Yeah, well, uh, we decided to take the place. You said we could have the run of the mill and everything. I mean, yeah. I, I heard you were out of town. No problem. Stay, just make yourself at home. I picked up a report from you. Uh-huh. Well, I'm going to go over here. Oh, did you get any information on David's cufflinks? Well, I'm not sure. Just a second. I haven't looked at this. It is about cufflinks. Uh-huh. Well, uh -huh. this is preliminary, you understand, Pearl? Uh, sure. Uh, good news, bad news. What do we have? Oh, man. Oh, come on, Cruz. I mean, uh, was there anything on the cufflinks? Like Probably, blood, for apparently instance? Apparently there was. Madeline's blood. I hate to sound like a ghoul the here. The traces but, uh, of blood were a match. That's it. I'm off the hook. He did it, right? He did do it. He really did it, no matter what he says, didn't he? It certainly does look that way. What an awful, awful man. We have enough right here to arrest this guy, right? Yeah, I think so. I just got to pick up a warrant. Well, don't waste any time. Courtney, we couldn't have gotten this far without you. I want you to know that. I really appreciate it. Oh, Madeline. Madeline. As for me, I guess thanks is just not good enough. I gotta come up with something better, don't I? Huh? Well, I, I better uh better go get that warrant. Listen, you two can stay here as long as you like. I'll probably be a while. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Pearl, is it over? Is it really over? You have nothing to be afraid of anymore now. Everything. Everything is going to be okay. I haven't done anything you wouldn't do in my position. So you see, you could have denied him gambling privileges. You could have made him pay back the money on installment plan. Hmm? Maybe, but then he would have gone someplace else to gamble. I think demanding full payment is the only way to jolt him out of his compulsion again and make him realize how serious no. it is. Try to tell me that you're doing this for warrants. Good. No, among other things. A oh, baloney. You're doing it because of your own sick need to reduce us to nothing. You don't need any assistance from me, Lana. The Lockridge is already ruined. Yeah, you've been losing money for years. No one ever called attention to it because you've been losing a little bit at a time. But then came the divorce, and your bad decisions and your dwindling resources all came to light, and everybody had a good look at it. Even your own son is beginning to repeat your own profligate ways. 
Chickens are coming home to roost, Lionel. It's only a matter of time till you're down to your last penny. Really? Hmm? Well, even if your hysterical predictions came true, and I did in fact get down to my last penny, I still would not sell you my land, and neither would Warren. Hmm. That's his decision. It's his land. He may have other ideas. Well, you'll excuse me, Lionel. I have to go. Uh, look, if you can't afford lunch today, I'd appreciate you freeing up the table. We need to accommodate our paying customers. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be provided for you free of charge. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. I don't understand. I've explained our findings to you, Mr. Laurent. Traces of your wife's blood and tissue were found on your cufflinks. Now, I want to know what happened to that shirt you were wearing. Did you throw it away? This is incredible. I, I didn't kill her. I swear it. Look, I, 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 I know what you may have found, but it doesn't mean what you think. You might want to take a moment to reconsider before you say anything else. Have you had a chance to uh, consult a lawyer? I, I don't need time. I'll talk right now. Okay, I have a stenographer waiting outside to take your statement, if you're willing. Fine. Great. Now come in here, Tommy. Mr. Loren is going to talk to us. Sit down right there and we'll proceed. Now I'm going to ask you again. What happened to the shirt you were wearing? Did you destroy it? I hid it. Where? Look, there's a rock um, on, 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 on the side of the breakwater. It's uh, facing uh, east, away from the motel, um, underneath the harbor sign. I, I crumpled up and hid it under there. Okay, hold on a minute, please. Better get somebody on there to take care of this thing before something else happens to it. Yeah, this is Castillo. I want to talk to Miller. Red Cruz. I'm talking to a suspect in the Madeline Lorenz case. Exactly. He says he put the shirt in question under a rock near the breakwater. It's uh, below, below the harbor sign. You know what I'm talking about? Why don't you get somebody down there right away to check it out? Courtney, don't look at me like that. And how else would I look at the man who murdered my sister? Wrong. You're all wrong. Listen, uh, get him out of here. I don't want him in this okay, house. What's the problem? Listen, Inspector, when you hear my story, you're going to know I'm not the guilty one. And I refuse to speak in the presence of the man who is. Hey, it's not going to work anymore, pal. You better wake up. They Pearl. finally got your number. Pearl, we're set up for questioning here. I think it's best if you leave us to our business. Of course. Come on, let's go. Courtney, I want you to stay. I want you to hear this. Are you sure? Yes. It's up to you. I'll listen to him. Okay. We'll see you later. Okay. I'm going to bring it up one last time. Are you sure you want to do this without an attorney? You can and should have one. Oh, I'm fine. Let's do it. You're prepared to admit that you were present in Santa Barbara on the day of the murder? Yes. In that case, I want to hear the truth. The truth, Mr. Laurent. Concerning your whereabouts and actions. On that day. Santa Barbara. Because I suspected Madeline of having an affair. Look, I, I was distraught. I blamed myself, but I was I was determined to do anything to, to get her to change her mind. Because I knew that if, if I confronted her, she'd just deny it. So I had to catch her in the act. I had to fight fire with fire. A week before I, I came out, I, I hired a private investigator to follow her. He came up with this uh motel that she had been frequenting. So when I came out here, I got the address. 416 Los Altos. I made up my mind to follow her there. Let's skip ahead. I want to know what happened from the moment you arrived at the bungalow. What did you see? Well, the first thing I noticed was that the door was slightly open. Hey, I, I thought this was pretty strange since she was supposed to be having this clandestine affair. So I, I thought that, well, maybe I'd missed her. Maybe she'd left. Just to check, I pushed the door open just a little bit. And, and I saw her there, lying there with blood everywhere. Did you go to her? I went to her. I ran to her. I, 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 I called her name. I, I, I lifted up her head. I tried to get her to open her eyes. I, I, even, I even put my ear down to her mouth to see if I could hear her breathing, but I couldn't. 
Then I, then I tried to grab her, her wrist for a pulse, but I couldn't feel a pulse. Listen, listen, I may be guilty of a lot of things. Neglect, yeah. Cowardice, yeah. But when I found Madeline, she'd already been struck down and left for dead. I thought she was dead. Courtney, you gotta believe me. I am not a murderer. Warren, where are you going? I'm just to make a phone call, ma'am. Please don't call Cece. Don't let him do this to you. Warren, there is more at stake here than you realize. Cece is using you. Little by little, he's trying to get a hold of everything that this family holds dear. Now, don't let him get away with that. And I wish there was another way out of it, but there's just not. There is one. I'll loan you the money. Forget about it, Mom. I'm not about to take your money. You've earned it living with Dad all these years. I'm not about to take your money either, Dad. Just leave me alone. Warren, you can't give away your grandmother's land. So what do you suggest then? Perhaps I should just disappear the way you've done your whole life every time the going's gotten tough? Warren, please No, don't. it's okay, August. It's okay. All right. Maybe I wasn't the greatest example in the world. But do you have to make all my mistakes? Because what have you cared about the mistakes I've made, Dad? You don't care what I'm doing or what I'm going through. That's not true. All you care is about, about is, is justifying Brick's existence. No. Protecting the family name in front of C.C. Capwell. If anyone else had offered to buy that land, you would have said fine. That's ridiculous. Uh. Minx gave you that land. You know how much it means to her. Your grandfather was born on it. She gave it to you because she thought you'd treat it with respect. And it would destroy her if you let it go. I'm going to handle this my own way, Dan. Warren, how can you? Am I over 21? That's right. It means I can do this any way I want to, and that means giving C.C. grandmother's land if I have to. Neither you nor Minx can stop me. I'd like to be left alone. I'm looking everywhere for you. Why? Look, I'm really sorry about what happened earlier, and I want to explain. Forget it. No. No, look. I don't want you to have to make up something again. And I'm, I can't believe I lied. Especially to you. Oh, especially to you. You, you came to Angel's door, and you got me all flustered. I thought the truth might sound really bad. I mean, why am I cleaning the guy's apartment when I have a perfectly good job here? I thought you might take it wrong, like I was there for some other reason. That's the only reason why I told you it was a woman's apartment. I am so sorry. I really am sorry. You, you know, if you're there for some other reason, I mean, that's fine. I mean, it's none of my business. I mean, if you want to have a boyfriend, that is fine. Angel is not my boyfriend, Ted. Please believe me. I believe you. I, I'm, I'm sorry for following you. Yeah, well, you should be. Well, now, wait a minute. Did this ever occur to you that maybe I'm following you because I care about you? Hmm? Well, maybe I didn't want you to jump to any conclusions because I care about you. Do you? never cared about anyone as much as you. Then why did you want to spend some time with me today? Then why did you go running off? Well, can I make up for that? After all, the beach is still there. Yeah, I guess it is. Well, I'd like it very much if you'd take me there now. I don't know. I'm enjoying just standing here. That was quick work. No problem, Inspector. Is this your shirt? Yes. Courtney! What's going on? Cruz? What is going on? Oh, Curly told his story. But I don't believe a word of it. You should have seen the blood on his shirt. <laughs> you give me the money first. Yeah. 
Here's a uh, hundred bucks. It's it's all I got. Live it up. make this quick. After our conversation today, I just thought you might need a little extra motivation. What? I've got something I think you really should hear. Just in case you think my little piece of tape is some kind of joke. Get a load of this and then tell me you have nothing to worry about. You almost trapped me into killing Eden in cold blood. You had the gun, Gina. You had her right where we wanted her. But you waited too long. Tomorrow morning on today, Senator Gary Hart of Reforming Pentagon Spin. I'm Jane Pauley, also Michael Caine, and more with George Harrison. Join us tomorrow morning on today.